what a lovely day so far. Thank you, uh, as always, to everyone that's contributing to put it on. Uh, also to the theaters, I caught 60 minutes of bullet train during lunch instead of eating. That was delightful. A little violent, but I enjoyed it. Uh, so today, what I want to talk about is, is what I always talk about, uh, if you know me, the most important thing, stonks, which is... Uh, for you uh, avid investors like myself, uh, we got someone piecing out already. That's smart. Uh, this is not going to be a financial advice uh, talk. So we got uh, stonks is what I believe in. In fact, uh, this quote got me really into a popular stonk on the, on the internet. Uh, I can't read it this way. I'll just look at it. With Cloudflare Workers Platform, we hope to empower the next billion dollar enterprise to be built entirely on Cloudflare, said Matthew Prince, Utah uh, resident, I believe, lives in... Uh, lives in Park City, co-founder and CEO of Cloudflare, whether you're an individual developer or a small business, anyways, it was the billion dollars and the fact that he thought Cloudflare uh, workers could be the platform that the next unicorn could be built on. So uh, I got really hyped when I read this in October of last year, which is right around there on the chart. <laughs> Bought in ridiculously heavy. This is not even a joke, by the way. Thank you for laughing. It's cathartic. Uh, you know, and so this talk, the aim here is to help uh, right the curve. So if I can convince you all to build the next unicorn, uh, I can get that Rolexus I've always wanted. So uh, that's actually the setup. This is, this is totally a sales pitch for using Cloudflare workers as your only backend uh, from someone whose employer does not use Cloudflare workers. So Tomo, where I work, uh, does not use Cloudflare workers. Uh, and there's also a second caveat here. Uh, I'm probably the worst developer in this room. There's so many smart people here. Uh, so uh, take it for what it's worth, but this is what my experience is with it. So Tomo, again, where I work, uh, that's the biggest I've ever seen that logo. Yes, it's Tomo, not Domo. If you happen to know me, I did work uh, six years at Domo, and the similarity is really funny. They were both uh, startup with you know experienced founders. They got a ton of money. Uh, with no product. The, both of them are derived from Japanese t t theme and terms. Uh, I worked at Domo for six years. I've worked at Tomo for two. My wife still works at Domo. She does not work at Tomo. Uh, I applied out of, out of school uh, when I graduated to work at Domo. I uh, had a great run there, really enjoyed it. And I applied to Tomo because this is literally my thinking for applying. Uh, LOL, wouldn't it be funny to work at all the Omo companies? And uh, then I, I, I had a chat with the, uh, the founders and the, the engineering leadership and fell in love. And so, yeah, Tomo and Domo, that's, the, that's my life dream. If there's another Omo company out there, let me know. Uh, I made this version of the Tomo logo because Tomo Utah is what I'm all about. Tomo is a great place to work. We're remote. We have great people. We can skip all this. The relevant stuff here is that while I don't use uh, Cloudflare workers at work, I do use a lot of lambdas on the teams that I've worked with here. And... Uh, Hasn't been a great experience for me. Sorry if there's any AWS Lambda folks here. Uh, the local development is like kind of an awful experience. Testing's hard. Uh, Lambda to Lambda calls is difficult. You know, they have SFNs, which are step functions, which are an interesting uh, technology to, to manage kind of state and do some orchestration. Um, we use that a lot at Tomo to solve workflow problems. We do mortgages, so a lot of asynchronous. We have to wait for humans and then wait for uh, non-humans and then more humans. Uh, so it's on and off, and we use FSNs to manage that, which is fun. Um, so while I don't love them individually, I do love the, the serverless mindset and how encapsulated they are and how autonomous they are and how quickly we can move uh, as a team to, to spit out a Lambda function. In fact, it's kind of addicting to say, oh, just spin up another Lambda. We'll, we'll solve this bit for it. So I love Lambdas, uh, just not uh, the AWS variant. So, uh, restated, you can talk to me about Tomo. I love serverless, but I don't love AWS Lambda. And that's kind of where my mind, my part of my excitement to learn Cloudflare Workers came in uh, because it, it approaches serverless from a different direction. And uh, I think it's a really, really interesting bit. So, uh, I know I said I don't use uh, Cloudflare Workers at work. Uh, I'm still somewhat credible, although I said I'm the worst developer in the room. Uh, so, in preparation for this talk, I actually built an entire app. Uh, I spent uh, all the time that my baby was sleeping during my recent paternity leave, my first child, I'm quite proud, um, building this app to try and learn Cloudflare Workers so I could give a talk on it. And uh, this was after I already invested, by the way, in case you're worried about my, my logical thinking here. So I built an app called Topic. Uh, I'll show it later, but this is kind of where I'm basing a lot of my experience off. I try to pick an app idea that I've had um, that presented the challenges that I've had working with uh, Lambdas at work to see if Cloudflare was a better solution. 
So could Topic be the next billion dollar company? Uh, probably. Um, Anyways, so we'll dig into Cloudflare and see how it is. So from the beginning, the interesting thing about Cloudflare workers as opposed to traditional lambdas and serverless stuff is that they're on the edge. Edge rendering, I'm sure everyone in this room has been bit by the hype bug around the edge at some point. Yeah, very enthusiastic. Uh, cool. So what it, what it is instead is, you know, instead of a single, these are just like the top Google result images. I, I'm not good enough to make my own art. Uh, instead of having like a single server, like you know, on AWS you pick like US West or US East and you pick a, a single uh, host, uh, when you deploy to the edge, it gets put everywhere so that uh, the closest the interaction is to the person interacting with your application, they'll hit the closest network and it'll be faster. It's the, the future, if you will. In fact, I think Lambdas now offer some edge-like stuff themselves. Dave's, Dave's nodding, so uh, he's more up to date than me. Uh, this is a really low res image, especially at this size, which is, uh, wow, looks real good. Uh, these are all like the edge networks for Cloudflare right now. So they're, they're, they have a lot. They have a lot. And so they really do have a, a nice edge network. It's fast everywhere. Um, they also have done something with workers. Like this is their, this is their graphic from their website explaining how they get around things like um, cold starts that Lambdas have. You know, traditionally, if you're an early Lambda uh, adopter, you know, you'd notice the, the beautiful thing is you don't pay for servers that are running all the time, but when you want to kick off that function, the first time you run it in a bit, it's got to have a cold start, and it can set off all sorts of metrics and alarms if you care about the performance of your app. And so they've done a bunch of work with their edge network and, and workers to try and get around cold starts, which is another highly intriguing thing for using these in production. Uh, but also, you know, a brief overview of their sequence diagram of kind of how it flows through their worker runtimes. So that was a super brief and fast overview of what Cloudflare workers are on the edge. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the ecosystem bits that Cloudflare offers in relation to workers. And then eventually I'll tie it into how I use them together to build an app and what I learned and if you should do it too. So uh, Cloudflare products that are interesting to workers. We just said uh, workers, these are like their functions. These are their lambdas. Uh, they're on the edge. You can write them in JavaScript or TypeScript. They have uh, support for both. Uh, you know, TypeScript uh, all the way. That's what I say in interviews. Uh, you'll see when I write my code, there's, there's any's everywhere. Um, anyways, uh, they're, they're basically fetch handlers. They're, they're really simple to understand. We'll take a look at them later. Um, but they also offer the, these other pieces that are connected in their workers ecosystem that you can take advantage of to build apps and or pieces of apps. So their kind of most established one is called Workers KV, which is a key value store. Uh, it's really fast. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can uh, put something in their kind of edge key value store. Uh, I think you'd have like millions of records in there if you want. Uh, it's really fast. It, you know, it's obviously limited on what it can do for, for database storage for an app because it's just a key and a value. But uh, you can use it for lots of good things like uh, secrets or values or other things that you want to access in your workers lightning fast. Uh, I use it quite a bit in, in my app. I think it's, I think it's an interesting solution. I've, I've tried to build like a type ahead based off of uh, using just key value. Uh, instead of trying to do something like smarter devs would do. Uh, this, was, this was my test, and it, it works reasonably well. So uh, a pretty cool piece. Uh, they also have R2, which has been uh, on Hacker News quite a bit. Um, it's an S3 competitor, essentially. It's a little different because everything is interfaced through workers. Um, and I think I have a line later in my slides, but it's good to say now. In, in Cloudflare ecosystem, essentially everything is a worker. Uh, it's almost like in JavaScript, everything is an object. It's like everything is a worker behind the scenes. And so you can put uh, objects in R2, but you have to write, kind of write a, a, a worker to interface with it, which is a little bit of a mind warp. I'm used to uploading something in S3, grab the URL, spit it out. Um, now I had to hit a worker, create a worker, call the worker URL, and then, then it'll return me the value or the object that I wanted. Uh, you can also trigger workers off cron jobs, which are fun. Um, this is the most interesting bit for application building, durable objects. Uh, so these are another kind of uh, interesting bit that's different. They're long-lived, globally consistent JavaScript objects that are built into Cloudflare's edge network, um, which is kind of an interesting way to think about application state, potentially, and or you know, your back-end state. They're, they're pretty cool. Uh, I tried a, a number of things with them. Um, there's some great blog posts out there where people are using uh, like xState in a durable worker to keep uh, do orchestration for their microservices. Uh, pretty compelling stuff. I feel like I'm, I'm still like grokking exactly where I want to use it. 
But along with those, you can trigger those off of alarms. So these long living objects, which traditionally Lambda is, you know, you have to execute and when the execution request is done, your code's done. But you can hit a hit a worker function that calls a durable object and then it can process things, you know, as long as it needs behind the scenes because they stick around forever. And so uh, if you want to re-trigger things within those, you can kind of do, uh, oh geez, uh, what's that called? Uh, recursion type stuff within your own durable objects and, and keep processes running forever. So kind of a different uh, different way to think about things, but it's cool. Other stuff, they have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, you should probably uh, look at it. They're well known, probably Cloudflare for like you know their security, their performance, reliability, all those offerings that like businesses care about. But you know, I'm a developer, just not a good one. So really, I'm focusing on workers. But if you want to get in the Cloudflare ecosystem, they offer a lot. And time is going quickly. I've got to move fast. So. Uh, when I started thinking about how to build an app, uh, I've done this uh, a few times. Uh, it's always like which architecture you want to pursue, uh, and and can Cloudflare workers support that architecture? So you know you've got uh, microservices, you've got monoliths. Uh, yeah, uh, the cool thing about micro or Cloudflare workers is they can all exist within services, and services can call different services natively. Uh, it's really easy. It's slick. Uh, so you can do uh, microservices within groups of Cloudflare workers. If you wanted to put them all in a single thing, that's fine too. Uh, monolith for life. Uh, you could also write your own API gateway with a service because services can call services. So what I'm trying to show with these slides is uh, you can solve almost all of these classic architectural problems for scaling large applications uh, by using a, an entirely serverless or Cloudflare workers backed uh, stack. Uh, you could use the durable object as a message broker or, uh, or you, could, you could tap into other you know, uh, hosted serverless things like RabbitMQ or you know serverless Kafka. If you want to do orchestration or choreography, however you want to do it, um, I think there's ways to do it in the ecosystem. Yeah, I know some people database triggers as uh, event brokers, probably not like 100% parallel there, but possible. This is what I really like about it, and this is where I'm probably going to recommend Tomo uses them. Uh, BFFs, I don't know if you're familiar with that pattern, back end for front end, uh, you know, a, a way to encapsulate the API endpoints your front ends are interacting with or make them specific to which front ends you have. I think Cloudflare workers are a really, really good candidate uh, to be used for BFFs. So if you're a front end dev, uh, a great possibility to uh, go full stack here easily. So uh, I'm going to keep cruising or I'll never even get to pitch my app. So uh, local environment uh, is really good. Uh, local development on Lambdas I said was painful and that might be my ignorance. Um, but uh, it's really, really easy. Basically they have a Wrangler CLI. You install it. You say Wrangler dev and it does live reloading. Um, it takes your code and actually puts it in their edge network in development mode and then calls it from the edge network, uh, which is pretty slick actually. It's uh, been the, uh, the smoothest development experience I've had in a while for something that's sophisticated. Um, you also have browser debugging. I was going to show you real quick kind of what this looks like. Uh, oh no, there's the app. Anyways, um, so yeah, you basically run this command. This is a specialized one because uh, I'm using a beta. Oh no. I broke it. Well, this is why you don't uh, go off of your branch. Anyways, if you run that, uh, it'll start up, and then you can like hit D and open a debugger window in Chrome, and you can see your all your logs from your functions, even though they're executing uh, on the edge, which is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, other stuff. Uh, you can also run it in local mode. So if you don't want to have your local stuff go to the edge network to test and interact with it, you can run it all built into the Wrangler because they've uh, built in something called Mini Flare. So the cool thing about this is if you wanted to do more CI CD, uh, you can run the entire stack essentially locally or uh, simulated locally. So you could uh, you know run that on a container, do CI CD uh, before deploying. So. Pretty cool. If you want to do more environments, uh, they're really easy to add. You basically just add them in the configuration file, the .toml. Um, you can have as many as you want. Uh, they spin up new versions. You'll have your own URLs. You can deploy to all of them separately. Um, really, uh, really slick. I keep using that word a lot in these slides now that I'm reading it out loud. Um, I'm not going to demo the local dev because I just showed that it's broken. So that's no good. But we'll look at the .toml file here. Uh, so this is 
again, I'm not the worst developer. Sorry if it's not formatted or looks nice. I, I don't have the right color coding. I don't even probably have a, something installed for Tomal. But you know, I'm basically uh, giving it a name and some some stuff up here. And here I'm declaring my in, uh, production environment where I'm giving it some IDs. Actually, don't hack me. Is this being recorded? It's probably not a good idea to show those. Um, oh well. <laughs> Be kind, <laughs> you know. We're a good community. What do I have to worry about? Um, you know, you can you can uh, connect to those durable object bindings. There, I'm using the key value stuff. I'm putting in my local local development uh, variables, which is localhost, and then it has a concept of migrations. I try to write a queue, so I made a queuer app. Uh, the queue in the durable object was a bit of a letdown, but I'll talk about that later. So, uh, Tomo files has set everything up. When you write a production, it's easy. You say uh, log in and then publish the environment you want. Uh, super cool. If you want to see what the published dashboard looks like, like this is, this is kind of it. I have like this is my dev environment. This is my production environment. Here's my R2 interface workers. It's a pretty minimal UI. Um, here's my key value store stuff where I'm doing the search. Um, you can have your plans, they're free unless you want to do cool stuff and then they're like $5 a month so they're not too expensive. But that's generally what it's looking like. Uh, CICD, I already mentioned this, uh, you could run it in a container and deploy it automatically. Monitoring and alerting, uh, also basically I'm trying to hit all the pieces that you traditionally get asked if you had to do a systems design interview so uh, trying to prove that you could do the whole thing with uh, Cloudflare. Uh, really easy. I think Sentry was the best option. I, I defaulted to Datadog because I also bought stock in them that's way down. Um, but Sentry works really easy. Uh, it, it hooked up really nice. Uh, you can log errors. Um, I can prove it by showing the fact that I have errors in my production environment in the last 30 days. Um, really simple. Basically, uh, you just use the library, give it your ID, and then catch errors and log them. So uh, you can see all the bits. There's some basic error logging built into Cloudflare, but it's not good. I don't think you can really use that for anything. So use Sentry or uh, spin up your own Datadog instrumentation. So uh, ooh, 12 minutes. So data, data. If I'm building an app and I'm trying to use Cloudflare as my back end, you know, how it interacts with databases is a very important thing. Serverless problems require serverless solutions. Um, so if you're running serverless, you need a database that can be accessed serverless. Even if you have a long standing, I'm getting some head shakes, so feel free to come up and tell me why I'm wrong after this, uh, my friends. But uh, if you have a, a serverless uh, database, uh, you can interact with them. So DynamoDB is kind of the standard from the Lambda ecosystem. You can do serverless Aurora. MongoDB Atlas, which is a basically an API in front of Mongo, is what I've been building my app off of. Um, PlanetScale just released a an actual demo of using Cloudflare workers to interact with PlanetScale's uh, serverless JavaScript interface. Uh, FaunaDB, uh, they advertise to me nonstop everywhere I go, so they must do it, I assume. And uh, Cloudflare D1, which is a, a pretty cool product that Cloudflare is in alpha on. I tweeted about it. Uh, I was like, hey, I'm giving a talk. I would love to get access. And the CTO responded and gave me access, which was cool. So. Uh, uh, or you can anything with, uh, blah, blah. we don't need that. So what D1 looks like, uh, this is their alpha product, it's coming into the future. It's SQLite on the edge, and it's SQLite built on their own durable objects platform. And so they are going to let you interact with it, like SQLite, and then do all the work to replicate it into all the edge workers uh, across the world and, and take care of all the consistency stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's relational, it's SQL, it's kind of basic, and it, because it's in alpha, it has some huge limitations, like 50 reads or writes per second. Uh, there's no really established migration strategy. Uh, you just can like run a local script, and this is kind of what I've been using here. Uh, like I just comment in different SQL commands, and then I execute them, and it updates my, uh, my databases in my different environments. Um, so it's cool. It's really early. I got I got really excited about it um, when I realized I'm not a good Mongo relational or I'm <laughs> I'm not a good data structure in uh, non relational data. So I decided to pivot over to D1 once I got access, and then. Uh, it's not far enough along, and so now all my work is just broken. But that's why uh, you know you wait until things is a not beta. And it, in the actual dashboard, uh, it says alpha even. So. Uh, just to prove, you know, it's D1 alpha, so it's early. It's early, but I'm optimistic it's going to be cool in the future. So uh, the syntax is really simple. 
Uh, I'll show, I wrote my own uh, next auth interface really badly here. Again, like, look, here's my TypeScript skills, uh, red everywhere. Um, yeah, you basically can just write your SQL command and then you bind, you execute them. So binding and so, you know, uh, prevent SQL injection and such. You get the results. Um, if there's an error, I log it to Sentry. And that's it. It was really, really fast to spin up my own like authentication service on top of D1. Um, so I think it'll be cool in the future, but not not quite ready. So uh, yeah, I covered all this stuff. Oh yeah, the, the biggest thing that, that got me is uh, you can't use, although it's built on top of durable objects, you can't actually use D1 with durable objects currently in alpha. So uh, it's kind of a problem. So now I'm going to start working with planet scale. Uh, I'll follow up at next year's conference to let you know how that went. Okay. So now I'm going to show you all these pieces working together uh, in the app called Topic. It's something that uh, I think is fascinating. Essentially, it's recommend recommendations for everything from everyone. Uh, you do this by making top 10 lists. And so I built this all on the Cloudflare backend. And I kind of want to show you a little bit of what it looks like. Um, over here, topic.com, which was a, just a $12 domain that I tell my wife, um, was not a premium purchase. Anyways, uh, I want to look at this because that looks kind of good at the big screen. Uh, so this front end is obviously next, uh, it's next JS. It's using some material UI, uh, sort of clean the front end engineer. Here's where I'm doing the type ahead search for things. Uh, so that kind of worked. You can find topics and see how people have rated them. Um, and so this was all built on Mongo. I wanted to show you, I did a few tests basically to see if it would work. Uh, I put out some different topics and various social media aspects. I tried to bait people into getting upset around college football team rankings and no one cared. Uh, so that was a shame. Uh, then I picked uh, the Utah startups in uh, 2022, and there's R2 image storage happening. Here they're, uh, they're rated. Topic made it number nine. Thank you, gracious raiders. Um, I posted this on LinkedIn just to see if it could handle traffic, and it, it actually got... Uh, you know, some likes. Here's someone I don't know who works at Zonus that was pretty excited about the number four ranking on topic. So that was kind of fun. Um, I posted it on Lehigh Link. This was the best test. So Lehigh Link is the Lehigh local Facebook community page. Uh, not a toxic place as you would expect. Um, I, I went in and I said, hey, is this the top, are these the top pizza places uh, in Lehigh? And you know, I, I did some work for like open graph stuff, looks pretty nice. And you know, I think it was a big success. I have 105 comments. People are getting really upset. Um, they're fighting each other. They're making accounts like crazy uh, to, to reorder things because Blaze Pizza was too low. And so I got really excited here. I'm quitting Tomo any day now to go full time. Um, there's, there's even someone down here gets really upset uh, about anyone voting for Blaze Pizza because LeBron's a, a partial owner and he doesn't like LeBron. You know, the classic, the classic Facebook interactions you would hope for. So um, that's delightful. Uh, you know what, actually, I was going to try and do one here with us now to see if I could bait people into like debating, but I'll show you how, how it easy is to make them and then why I need durable objects. So I'm going to, oh, that's my local host. That won't work. Let's go over here and make picks. And I was going to just like set this down for a second and just kind of shout at you and say a uh, top JS frameworks, uh, something that we would all agree on the world. Thank you, Noah. You're a good man. And then, you know, I just come in here and I add things like, uh, we don't want to put react first because we want all the react people to come in and correct it. That's how we get users. Uh, so we'll say view and then we'll say uh, mithril. And then we'll say jQuery. <laughs> then we'll say vanilla JS, get good. Um, and then like then we put React here, so it's like a little bit credible. Uh, then like people will be like, wait, isn't Next just React? We'll let those people register as well. Um, so yeah, this is what you do. And then then when you hit save, what it does is it records those in my picks and then it, it takes any sort of attributes that I've given myself and I've, I've tagged myself with like 800 things, which is why you can see this guy say over here uh, in this LinkedIn post, he's like, hey, we're number four, but we're number two by people who love peaches because that's me. Um, so uh, to take it and um, 
to take that and do it all in a Lambda request would take too long. It'd be too slow. The interface is not good. So uh, when I make these picks, it hits my worker, it saves them for my user stuff, and then it kicks off a durable object, which then loads all my tags and then replicates and aggregates all of my picks across all my various uh, uh, dimensions. And that takes a fair amount of time, especially with this uh, serverless database. And so uh, that all happens asynchronous behind the scenes. The user uh, never sees it or notice it because they just get a snappy, snappy, really fast response for their personal stuff. And that's, for me, a, a great use case for leveraging the, the, the Cloudflare ecosystem. And in theory, you know, my scale test, it handled Lehigh Lynx traffic. Um, in theory, that'll scale uh, uh, to infinity, and my total traffic at all is like I think it gets it spiked to like 350 on the, uh, you know, LinkedIn took off one day, and it still has a long tail. Uh, I don't know why people really like knowing where their startup ranks. Um, so if you happen to be in like who's number one route or something, congratulations. Um, okay, we keep going. So, oh, four minutes stack. So how I built topic. Next.js front end, Cloudflare Workers back end, uh, IDI router. So if you want to like write uh, the actual stuff, it's really easy. Um, I'll actually have never showed you the workers endpoint. So this is like my main super file because again, I'm not I'm not that interested in being a great developer. Um, you know, I declare IDI router and then it handles the requests that come in here. I say options, great, just let them all through. Uh, get post, delete, put, yeah, let's let's attach sentry to all of these requests. And then I just declare my endpoint with its variables. Uh, I can log things that like, obviously I'm a good developer. I made it here uh, to clean up this code before I present next time. Um, anyways, yeah, it's really simple. And then I just have a JavaScript function that uh, loads stuff, does some work, and returns the values. And it's super, super simple and super fast. Um, I use R2 for images, and this is where I start to break down. I, this, this, the, the name of this talk was Cloud for Workers is your only back end. Uh, it, it wasn't. It can't do everything I wanted it to do. So I'm using some Vercel functions uh, for next auth because that's kind of built in, and also for the open graph stuff to make images look nice. Uh, I was using MongoDB for storage, uh, Sentry for monitoring, Google Analytics, SendGrid for email, uh, all stuff that you would use in other apps. They all integrate just fine. It's been a nice experience outside of. Uh, the reverse cell function stuff, which I'll talk about in a second. So, development observations, the takeaways, uh, super fast. I think I think there's real, real potential here to to make teams go go lightning fast, especially for prototyping or building out initial versions of uh, applications. Um, uh, I tried to do cool stuff with durable objects with their alarms to create a queue, and it didn't work super well, so I'm not huge on that. Open Graph was at the top of my list, but Chrome does not run on the Cloudflare Worker's runtime. It's not the exact same as a node runtime, so sometimes your libraries don't work exactly the same. So you couldn't spawn up Chrome to then make an image, uh, just take a snapshot of the picture and use it for Open Graph. So there are some technical limitations. Uh, there's my D1 access. I was really excited. The CTO thinks I'm cool enough to respond on Twitter. Uh, then I went back and looked. He deleted his tweet responding to me, so I don't know how to take that. Um, probably just didn't want more people pinging him. Um, or he like read my actual Twitter content and didn't want to associate. I don't know. Um, so uh, yeah, where are we at? So uh, hooking up uh, Auth0 was stuff. I was going to use Auth0. Uh, that worked well enough, but then I was like, oh, actually, I don't want to like pay for anything ever. Um, just the domain name that cost me $12 only. Um, so you could use uh, Auth0. Uh, next, next Auth was actually super slick. Um, there are no like other baked in like CF workers auth libraries. Uh, R2 took a mindset shift. I talk about it. Ultimately, shortcomings because I have one minute and 30 seconds. The whole talk is a lie because I couldn't do it all on just back end. I use Verosal functions, as I said. I use Next Auth. Uh, it's not a true road runtime. The documentation, the examples are early. They're, they're kind of lacking. You can't just like Google an answer and, and Google things and find the answer on Stack Overflow. Uh, you could join the. Um, they have a community on Discord. Uh, you can join. It's kind of hard to get answers there because they, they move fast. They move. They move really, really fast. And uh, but I got an answer that I couldn't use D1 in a durable object right now, or at least they were able to reproduce that it's broken for everyone. Um, so uh, final word. Uh, I really like Cloudflare Workers. The dev is really fast and efficient. The limitations can be frustrating right now. Uh, the data story is probably the biggest limitation depending on uh, your needs for your application and your business, but I'm bullish on, on D1. I'm excited to, to try out Planet Scale next. I think in certain use cases, it's ready to be used, uh, even enterprise applications like BFFs are great because you're not actually doing any storage. You're just forwarding that call onto somewhere else that's doing it that has an active connection all the time. Is it ready to be your only backend? Maybe, uh, maybe not. 
uh, is it good enough for topic moving forward? Yes, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep investing in net. If you want to read about software architecture serverless systems, uh, you can read them here. I threw in a little hot take in case I had too much time, which started to start a fight about micro front ends. Anyways, if you want to find me, I'm here. I'm a director of engineer at Tomo. I'm hiring people, DevOps, uh, senior engineers. I'm a terrible Twitter follower. Don't find me there. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, though. People like me on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, yeah, someone said they saw me on LinkedIn earlier. So I'm also a future founder, CEO, and billionaire of Topic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.